Welcome back, everybody. Thanks so much for joining me today. In today's episode, we are going to be crushing some more hard geometry problems. This is part three. This is going to be the last part for geometry problems. I'm going to have more videos on algebra and data problems for the SAT, so be sure to check those out. Okay, guys, let's dive right into this. Let's see. The perimeter of square ABCD is X, and the perimeter of isosceles triangle EFG is Y. If AB equals EF equals FG, which of the following statements must be true? Okay, let's, let's draw some things real fast. So here's our square, and here's an isosceles triangle. So we're told that um, the side lengths of our square, which of course are all equal, also equal the two identical sides of our isosceles triangle. So which of the following must be true? Okay, let's, let's look at our answer choices. Zero is less than y, which is less than x over four. Well, y is the perimeter of our triangle, and x over four, well, this is the perimeter of our square divided by four, so this x over four is just one single side length. Just one single side length. So this is, of course, not true. The perimeter of our triangle is definitely greater than a single side length. Here we have a single side length is less than the perimeter of our triangle, which is less than two side lengths. And this is again not true because here we have two of our square side lengths right here as sides of our isosceles triangle. And then we have a third side, which would of course make it longer. So B is not the answer either. Let's look at C. We see that we have two side lengths is less than our perimeter of our triangle, which is less than the perimeter of our square. So this is our question. Is the perimeter of our triangle less than the perimeter of our square? And we have to think about this for a second. Uh, th this third side of our isosceles triangle it could be either really long or re really skinny, kind of depending on the length of our other two sides. But something we do know, we know our triangle inequality theorem, which tells us for a triangle, our two shorter sides combined must be larger than our third longer side. So if this third side is really long, well, then we still know that two of our normal side lengths must be greater than this mystery third side. Therefore, let's look at what we have again in question C. We have, it says we have two sides, which is greater than the perimeter of our triangle. This is true as we have a missing third side. And then which is larger, the triangle or the square? Well, we, hear, we see here in our square, we still have two sides left, which are equal, and these two sides, which are equal to these identical side lengths of our isosceles triangle, and by our triangle inequality theorem, we know that these two, sh two sides must be greater than the third side, so yes, the perimeter of the square is larger than the perimeter of the triangle. So C looks like it's going to be our answer. Let's, let's eliminate D and E just to verify. So D tells us that perimeter of the square is less than the perimeter of the triangle. We just found this to be false, so D is false. And E tells us two perimeters of our square is less than the perimeter of our triangle. This is also, of course, false. So our answer here is C. All right, I think that was probably the hardest problem yet in any of these videos, so, so that was a fun one. Okay, let's, let's look at this next problem. In the figure above, two line segments in the xy plane form a right triangle with the x-axis. What is the value of A? So we need to find this value A. We know that this length is 10, 
Okay, let's, let's drop a quick per, uh, perpendicular line. Separate this out. Okay, this is moved over two units. So this section is two, and this segment is, ten, is eight. Okay, what is the value of A? So we need to know the height of this line. If we find uh, the height, then we know A. So how can we find this? Well, let's just start writing down what we know. I, I find that if you're not sure how to conquer a problem, just start writing down everything you know, and hopefully the answer will just pop out. So this is, of course, a right triangle. So I'll call this side x and this side y. We, of course, know from Pythagorean's theorem that x squared plus y squared is going to equal 10 squared, which is 100. What else do we know? Well, we see that 2 squared plus h squared is going to equal x squared. And we see that 8 squared plus h squared is going to equal y squared. And so look at this. Here we can plug in both of these formulas into our first formula. So what do we have? We have uh, 2 squared, which is 4. 4 plus h squared plus 8 squared, which is 64, plus another h squared. This equals 100. Okay, 4 plus 64 is 68. 100 minus 68 is 32. So right now we have 2 h squared equals 32. And so h squared equals 16. And so of course h equals 4. So the height of this line is 4. And so our value for a is 4. So this answer is B. Excellent. That, that also was a really fun problem. Let's go to the third problem of this problem set. The perimeter of a particular equilateral triangle is numerically equal to the area of the triangle. What is the perimeter of this triangle? Okay, so let's, let's draw a quick equilateral triangle. Lots of times drawing a picture is, is really useful in solving problems. It, it just gives you some further insight. So, of course, the perimeter, if these are all equal sides, then this side equals this side equals this side. So the perimeter of this triangle is going to equal 3 times x, where x is our side length. And then what's the area going to be? The area, of course, equals base times height. Base times height divided by 2. Well, what's our base and what's our height? So let's, uh, let's drop a perpendicular. From this perpendicular, we have a right angle here. This is an equilateral triangle. So this angle must be 60 degrees. And again, this, is, this bisected this top angle, so this is 30 degrees. So we have a 30, 60, 90 triangle here. Uh, the value of this shorter length is, of course, x over 2, as it halved our full base. And our height, therefore, is going to be what? Our height of this triangle is x squared root 3 divided by 2. So the area for our triangle equals our base x times our height, which is x square root 3 over 2. And then this is, of course, all multiplied by another 1 half. So we have to then divide by 2. So what I have here in red is the area of this triangle. Now, so how do I, how do I finish solving this problem? Well, in the question, we're told that the perimeter equals the area. So let's set these two equal to each other and solve. So let's do this. We have 3x equals uh, 
x times x root 3. Here, let me clear up some more space. x times x root 3 divided by 2, all times 1 half. And then we just simplify to solve this. So first we can multiply both sides by 2, giving us 6x equals everything we have in the brackets. We can multiply again by 2 to get rid of this 2. So if we multiply by 2 again, we have 12x which equals x times x square root 3. Now we can, we can cancel out one of our x's, so these x's cancel. And what are we left with? Well, we're left with 12 equals x square root 3. So now we can divide by 3, or square root 3 rather, and we have 12 over root 3 equals x. Now we are asked to find the perimeter of the triangle. And so we are given a single side length here. X, a single side length, is 12 over root 3. 12 over root 3. Here, let's clear the board. So we have 12 over square root 3. Uh, to get rid of the radical in the denominator, we, of course, multiply by 1 in the form of uh, the radical over itself and we get 12 root 3 over 3 and this is one side length again the perimeter is 3 times x so we multiply this by 3 to get our perimeter these three cancel and we're left with 12 root 3 so 12 root 3 is the perimeter of our triangle Wow, that was, that was a fun problem. Uh, honestly, guys, the math uh, for that problem is going to be the hardest you'll see. It, does, it doesn't get any harder than that. So if you thought that problem was easy, then you are good to go. Okay, let, let's check out this last problem for this video. What do we have? In the figure above, AC equals 7, AB equals BC. What is the smallest possible integer of the value AB? Okay, so we have AB equals BC. So this is an isosceles triangle. So this problem is really similar to the first problem we solved in this video. Again, let's be reminded of our triangle inequality theorem, which tells us the two shorter sides, when added together, must be greater than the third longer side. All right. So, therefore, what is the smallest possible integer of value AB? Well, if we're looking for the smallest possible value, then that tells me that uh, side AB and BC are going to be the two shorter sides. So we need to find an integer that, when added together, is barely bigger than 7. Well, of course, this is going to be 4, as 4 plus 4 uh, is going to be greater than 7, and this is going to be the, the largest integer, as 3 plus 3 would be 6, and 6 is not greater than 7. So this is not true. So 4 is the smallest integer value of AB such that these values all hold and can be true. So our answer here is 4. Okay guys, this was the last problem in this video. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you're starting to see how to manipulate these problems, how to think through them, how to figure out what to do. Please let me know down in the comments below what helps you and if I can do anything to make these videos more valuable to you. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and until next time, take care.